I have here in my hands the prototype. This is um, you'll see here it's mounted in a wooden box which I happen to like with a glass top. See, so you can see all the parts <laughs> and, and it's about cigar box sized. So you could use a cigar box if you wanted to. Then I have a breadboard down here. And then I have a number of potentiometers here. And then here I have two coils. I actually now I'm up to six. And then I have a number of other things in here, including dual diodes. Now, um, the secret of all this stuff, actually, and of course I have, I have some resistors poked here and there around and so on. Now, uh, some folks have expressed the, the uh, interest, desire, interest, whatever you like, in building a, an early radio. I do not recommend in any way, shape, or form the LITs because that is a year-long project for a very advanced maker, very advanced builder. But if you are a very advanced builder and you have, you can easily follow a schematic um, <clears throat> and you have the patience to do it, including the wines, six coils, by all means, go ahead and put up a litz. But actually, my recommendation will always be for one of the very, very best radios in the field of uh, home-built, uh, pirate-built radios, um, and that is, you guys have already selected, which is? The Dunwoody. The Dunwoody, the right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so, to me, the Dunwoody is a very, very um, good beginning project. It's the very first crystal radio you could build and get a great result from. It's a powerful little radio. It's a real beast. Plus, if you get the right kit for it, it has um, taps in the coil. It has coil taps at various lines. And you're going to find that incredibly useful because you can use that to get short wave. You can DX with this thing. Honest to God, you can DX with it. You do need a 100-foot antenna, a copper braid antenna. <laughs> it's true. Uh, or you need a diamond antenna or something like it that really gets, has a lot of reach to it. Ideally for a crystal radio, the longer the antenna and the better the ground, the better your reception is going to be. However! That's just a third of the, of the picture. Actually, it's, it's even not less than a third. It's probably a fifth of the picture. Okay, so here. Keep in mind that this radio was designed for radio telegraphy. You want to actually be able to tune stations out, leaving the station you want as the stronger signal. Okay? What you want is an air capacitor. Well, capacitance is important to understand. If you're going to build a radio, you got to know what capacitance and resistance are. You got to know those things. Well, capacitance. I think of capacitance. The word capacitance comes from capacity in my head, and the capacity for that electrical component. How much charge? can it accept before it discharges, before it sparks, before it overloads. <laughs> it overloads and yeah. allows the charge to pass through. Do you think of capacitance also maybe as a balloon? Blow up a balloon.
at some point, it's a and you float up in the air. <laughs> but boy, I tell you, if you're just into receiving signals, you can get amazing stuff. Your little crystal radio doesn't have a battery, it's not plugged into anything, it operates just on the radio waves themselves, that's the power supply of this thing. And you will be listening to Rio de Janeiro from New York. It's true. Now, it brings to mind one thing, which is how do you hear this stuff? First, the most obvious solution is going to require a power supply in the form of a 9-volt battery, standard 9-volt battery, which you'll have to replace probably once every six months or a year. And that is a little tiny low-impedance amplifier. They run about, God, if you can get one of these things, if you're lucky to get one, it's $50 or $60. But they're very terrific. They're, they're wonderful things. They're, they're long, they're, they were manufactured in the 50s, so you're not going to find them very readily. So not everyone will be able to get them. But a, a low impedance amplifier is going to work great. Now, here's something else that will work for you. And that is if you're an individual, you don't have to hear it to share it with everybody else, you just by yourself, is a pair of low impedance earphones. Man, these are fantastic. They date back to World War I. They're generally French or German. Sometimes the Brits uh, will show up. Once in a while an American make will show up, but rarely. Mostly they're going to be French. And they are an incredible device. So incredible, I can't tell you too much about it, but I can tell you this, that uh, when I was working at my communications job, I used exactly the same set of headphones. They're typically Bakelite, they have rubber, uh, they're a uh, hundred years old. They're 19, 1916, 1914. So they're 100 years old, these things. Okay? The, the plug-in is generally brass, but it can be other things as well. Um, various kind of metal for the plug. Um, typically what you might have to do is to alter the plug-in to make it available, to put, to put a, a quarter-inch phono on there. So that's what I would do for you, is I'd put a quarter-inch phono uh, on there so you can plug it into your front of your of your box. And by the way, you can use your Super Beacon the same way. But you don't want to retune your Super Beacon. This, you'll be able to retune. You can tune it to listen to all kinds of stuff, okay? <clears throat> but, and, and you get a lot more stations. I mean, the, what you're looking at here <clears throat> with this particular, with a Dunwoody, yeah, I think, is a lot more reach, a lot more bandwidth, a lot more frequencies available to you, see? So that's great, because you have a lot of, of, of experimental stuff you can do. And by the way, there are signals out there that no one has ever interpreted yet. There's stuff going on out there in the radio waves that people, frankly, don't have any idea what they are or where they're from. Well, you know, you can listen to the sunset. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You can listen to the sunset. The sunset puts out, it's it's wow. short wave, but it puts out, uh, it puts out signal. Yeah. You can listen to nebulas, galaxies, pulsars. They all make music. And you can actually listen to trees. It, it, we're not expecting a $300,000 donation. I'm just hoping for one, that's what I was saying. That would um, build us a healing center. Uh, this is something I wanted to talk about, actually. I, I uh, was encouraged to build a healing center and uh, a brick and mortar healing center. And I would be willing to do that um, but it would take some money. That would normally take between three and five million dollars to set that up with all of the 
different things you need to do with the county and the state and all that, plus the federal, but federal is always the biggest obstacle. But in this particular case, county is a, it's a mean county here. <laughs> They're mean. So, so setting up a healing center would mean doing a lot of, jumping through a lot of different hoops. But it could be done, but it would take a great deal of money because it's law time. It's, it's legal time, mostly. But there's also planning, commission, and, uh, and a building department, and, and uh, that kind of thing, and health department. And all those various officials have to be satisfied when you're building a healing center. It's, a, it's a, like a hospital. And we would have to be able to handle uh, patients who are very advanced uh, in, uh, in, in various stages of, of difficulty in order to be able to properly carry out our duties there. So that would take quite a bit of capital it would run into the millions. We could, for the 300, actually 350,000 is what I'm hoping for this year, uh, from one person or from many, however it works out, uh, in which we, with which we can uh, build a healing center that people could come to uh, we have, at the moment, uh, three MDs who uh, would be, I'm sure, willing to dedicate themselves to that if we did open that up and they're, they're in, our, in our work circle. So they would be very um, well amenable, to, yeah, amenable to work with, well disposed, exactly. Um, in fact, eager to, uh, to apply the knowledge they have in other realms to the realm of, of uh, organic healing as well as multi-healing. What is today called holistic healing, eh, it's not that great a name, but it's all right, it works okay. Um, but a real complete healing doesn't take place without the spirit. And often that's all it does take is the spirit to realize the need for healing and heal its own thing, which is essentially the best kind of healing in the world. That's the best. So you want to put together an environment that encourages that and that also assists that in all of the spiritual uh, ways possible. There are many. Jobs are plenty in that area. If we could get that set up, it would be quite lovely. Um, there is a place right nearby here that is for sale. It's within 20 minutes of here. It's 300,000, 300, 350,000 I think it is. It would have to be purchased for cash. There's no way to purchase it for anything else. In any other way, it has to be cashed out. And um, it could also function as, uh, as an ashram, but it also could function as a healing center. I mean, it has that, that capability. We can see that now, carrying it out in, online, in the virtual ashram, uh, that you can have an ashram and a healing center within the ashram. It's, it doesn't have to take over the entire ashram, it can be part of the ashram. So anyway, this week I noticed, or at least it, um, it became apparent to me that we're getting that same kind of uh, liftoff with the ashram. The numbers are starting to multiply exponentially. But, and uh, this is the, like like you're talking about the popcorn. Yeah, it, it, if if you make if you make um, efforts of introduction and uh, you're involved in the process in a particular way, 
it's different than all of a sudden people out of the blue emailing in saying, wait a minute, how do I get into this ashram thing? And it's a, it's a little bit like popcorn in the uh, skillet. It takes a while for the heat to get into the kernels and for the kernels to, to heat up so that the little bits of water in there will expand. Yeah, they start to reach that uh, boiling steam point. Because that's what, how they explode, is it? There's a, the water turns to steam and it just explosively uh, makes the popcorn. But it, the, the notion there is that once you've put the heat in, then it's as if all of a sudden everything just happens of its own accord, mm -hmm. which isn't true. It's the result of all of the effort that everyone involved has been making. But what you see is a uh, sudden onslaught of uh, apparent in, you know, interest and involvement. Um, let's talk about magnetism and radio waves, because those are two things that are not understood presently. A uh, radio wave can come from other dimensions, other universes, and be undetectable as extra-dimensional. Looks like any other radio wave. There are some ways to detect the difference between them. The difference has to do with what's called curvature, linear curvature. And the way that happens is that a straight line gets bent. If it came from inside the universe, it's bent one way, and only that way. If it came from outside, extra-dimensional, then it's bent a different way. If that helps you any. Uh, but essentially, for all practical purposes, a radio wave is really slow. It's the speed of light. Mm -hmm. Really slow. That's crawling across the universe. You realize that? The speed of light is crawling across the universe? Oh, yeah. Except, it's not the speed of light, it's the speed at which you see the light. Oh. It's the perception of the light that is actually being measured, not the light itself. You said before... The light is omnipresent in its linear, in its linear path. It's there. It's already there. Mm -hmm. It's a question of where, where the phosphor is lit up. Well, that's what I was going to ask. Is it as as a, it's a way of traveling in light? Yes. It's an infinite ocean of light. That's what the universe actually is. It's an infinite ocean of light. You can quote me on that. I don't think anyone's ever said that before. And um, well, what lights up the phosphor then? What's that? What lights up the phosphor? You do. The observer does. Oh. Yeah. The observer does. Where are you going to go with this? <laughs> this is the question I have. Um, if you're looking for spirit radio to work for you, you have to decide what it is you want it to do because it can be tuned and used differently, and it is tuned and used differently for different purposes by different folks. Mm -hmm. What I would recommend you learn is how to use a radio before you learn how to use a spirit radio. Do you understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. Learn to ride a tricycle before you get on the bike. You're going to take and get a signal from, from, uh, from Buenos Aires, and it's going to come all the way to, let's say, New York City. You're in New York City. Well, New York City would be kind of hard. Well, New York State, somewhere in New York State. In the city, it's kind of hard to receive like that. You've got a 100-foot antenna, 100-foot antenna. That's the least you want to put up. And... In fact, you've gotten really smart and you've learned to how to do it. So you put a diamond antenna up, which is 400-foot antennas in a diamond shape. Now that is going to be a killer antenna. All right. So, and it's flat to, it, it lays down flat. It's at approximately uh, 20 feet up in the air, which is a fairly okay height for an antenna. It would be better if it was a little higher, but say 20 feet. It's a 100-foot antenna. 
you're going to get Buenos Aires, but you're also going to get the station that is four blocks down the street and it's blasting at you. So you're going to want to take a booker and tune that out. Okay? You may have to tune and put maybe four or five of these in place to null out all of the very powerful, what they call high bangers or heavy bangers. So the banger stations, once they're quieted down, you will hear the remainder of the stations that are available. Then you can tune through those and find something of interest. Then you tune it finer. Then you get its power up by doing an antenna tune so you can bring the power of the station up so you can hear it better. Then you're going to try to refine it so that you hear it more clearly, so it's more loud and more clear. Loud and clear. Okay? So it's a question of that. It's how loud it is and how clear it is. Yeah, there's artist, artistry. There's no apps in these things. It's <laughs> all you. It's all a matter of dancing with dozens of dials and, 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 uh, and, and tweaking things and adjusting things and making things work. You're, you're making stuff work with clothes pins that would normally be made with rivets, you know? I built a um, circular dichroism device so I could look at D DNA. I did this back in 70... Six? No, 73, wow. 73. Building it was not that hard. And circular dichroism, it's a question of phase. Sometimes the light spins this way and sometimes it spins that way. You think of it as going up and down, but light going this way mixed with light going that way makes up and down. Or makes back and forth depending on how you add them. It gets real tweaky in there. But I put it's in... It's an oscillation overthruster you're thinking of. I, I put in filters that would look for light spinning one direction measure that against light going the other direction and then it would look for the difference and if there was a difference then that was exciting <laughs> it, it meant something about the molecules and dna was a brand new toy back then now you can do all kinds of stuff with it just automatically push a button walk away and you get these reports printed out for you the thing is in order to get a signal i had to tune in three knobs that told you nothing until they were all right. Yeah. It wasn't like, like okay, <laughs> okay, that one's close, then you do this next and then next. No. Blind tuning here, blind tuning there, and blind tuning there. And then if you got all three of them exactly right, then suddenly you could see the signal. I don't know if many of you remember, but there was a time when television station tuning was on a continuous dial. It wasn't one, two, three, four, five, six. It was this way, and you got to one thing. Then you had a little vernier dial like this, and you went, and you got it in like that. Then you had to tune your antenna to make it work. Then you had to do the contrast and the brightness. Then you had to do the vertical hold and the horizontal hold. And on and on and on, there were like 20 things you had to adjust for every station, and when it changed broadcast to the next show, you had to do it again! Mm -hmm. So it's like that. Okay. Oh, channel, it's exactly channel like Channel hopping was not hopping. No, no, <laughs> don't forget, this, this radio that you will be constructing it was made the same year that the Wright brothers tackled Kitty Hawk. The Wright brothers were flying at Kitty Hawk in 1909, this radio was made in 1909, it was designed in 1909. What they didn't have are the incredible uh, handmade vein capacitors, the air vein capacitors that I have. They are so amazing, as I say. And at that time also, it was impossible to obtain, it's easier now to, to get them, the uh, diodes. Because those diodes, nobody knew who had what. There was no way to tell who had any of these things, see? Um, and and uh, through Claude's lucky, totally, absolutely lucky contact in Japan, a Japanese friend of his, a scientist friend of his, who says, yeah, he says, you know, 
We have diodes like crazy in our place. We'll just see, I'll see if my boss will sell when them. When you make the coil that I indicate that you should make, when you make that coil, exactly as I've told you to make it, with those winds and those turns and so forth, first of all, you'll be a better person for it. <laughs> I believe so. I'm serious. It's going to cause you to slow down and really look at what you're doing. Because if you make a really bad, sucky kind of coil, it isn't going to work. Your radio will not, will marginally work, but it won't do what it's supposed to do, which is to beautifully capture whatever station you set it out to capture. Yes, I would like to do this project in order to undergo some form of transformation. Oh, by the way, is there any way I could do the project as I am with all my existing habits and predilections? And could you send it prefab? So all I have to do is hit the on button. Yeah, if you're doing something because you want to go for a change, and not just a change, but yeah. an actual something, you got to expect it to not be exactly the way it would be if you were the same as you are now. One of the things I want you to learn is how what, what tuning is about, how to tune. Because if you can tune a radio like this, you can also tune your heart and your mind. You can tune those things just as well.